What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be doing a 3D scene and compositing walkthrough of our recently uploaded subway horror shot that we have created inside of Blender. As usual, this first 3D walkthrough is not really a tutorial, but more of a quick walkthrough and breakdown going through the basic concepts that we use to create the shot so that hopefully you can apply some of the concepts in your own creative endeavors as well. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started here. The first thing I did for this shot was of course 3D track our footage. So this is our live action footage here in the 3D camera tracker inside of Blender. And you can see I've just done a very basic camera track of the scene. Pretty simple camera move, so not too much solve error. 0.75 pixels, which is fairly accurate for a 1080p resolution shot. So I've 3D tracked our footage here, then I've imported that tracking data onto a 3D camera in our scene here. So you can see our 3D camera is pushing through Z space just like our live action camera was moving. So now we can actually reconstruct that environment and have the 3D elements that we're adding to our scene move around as if they're in the shot. And as I mentioned before, I do have a 3D camera tracking tutorial on this channel. So I'll put a link to that in the description below in case you want to learn this concept. So I've 3D tracked our camera here. After 3D tracking our camera, it was then time to create a 3D reconstruction of our live action environment inside of the computer. So as you can see here, if I go into camera view really quick, you can see that I've created some planes in our scene as well as some steps here in the deep background to mimic our subway steps and I've just added this geometry where it would be in the live action shot so you can see I've just you know created a nice floor here and you know some stairs and by doing this we can then reproject the live action shot onto this footage and then emit light via camera projection onto the other 3d elements that we're adding to our scene as well as instance nature and other grunge elements on this 3d environment reconstruction in order to enhance the shot and give it a little bit more of a gritty feel as we desired so that was the second step here just recreating the general geometry of our scene and after doing Doing this you can then add all the fun stuff to the shot so this is kind of the general process i do for most visual effects shots when i'm dealing with live action footage i'll generally 3d track the shot and then reconstruct the environment in some way to get started after reconstructing the environment of our shot i then imported some motion capture data from mixamo.com and added a 3d character into our scene here let me just turn off a few of these view layers so we can dial in what we're talking about here a bit so as you can see here i have a collection with our person in it i'll just turn off a few of these elements really quick so after reconstructing the geometry of our scene, I've imported some motion capture data from the Mixamo collection, and I've just deleted a few bones here so that I kind of have this weird distorted looking motion capture information. So you can see I've deleted some of the top bones here and then I've just kind of distorted kind of the armature where the character's back would be. And then after that, I've imported this 3D character model and kind of aligned this to the armature mesh and then parented it to the armature itself using some very basic automatic weights. And I actually have a tutorial on how you can do that as well. So I'll put a link to that in the description below, but it's a pretty simple effect. Essentially, you just import your 3D character model and then import your armature with the animation attached to it and then you shift and select your character model then shift and select your armature control p and then you can add it with automatic weights and then if you do that correctly then your 3d model will follow the general movement of your armature so that's how i've created this very basic effect and this was the animation that was going to drive the other simulations in our scene so now that i had this animation data of this character walking through the subway i could then add other simulations and attach it and enable collisions to this character that is moving Moving. So for example, we have this sheet here that I've just conveniently overlaid on top of our character. You can see if I turn it off here for a second, I've just created a very basic plane here for this cloth simulation. And then I've simulated it falling on top of our character over the course of our timeline. So pretty basic little setup here, just a quick cloth simulation. I've used 50 cloth steps and I believe I used the uh, cotton preset here and you know baked out the simulation so that that you know, we would have this kind of cloth covering our character here in the foreground of our shot to give kind of a creepy look. So I've just added a very basic plane to our scene and then enabled our character as collision physics. And then I've then simulated this plane to collide with our character over the course of our timeline to create this pretty cool looking effect. And I'll actually do a tutorial on this specific effect in the future as well, in case you guys are interested in the specifics behind it. But that's the gist of it. Pretty basic little cloth simulation on the plane itself to create this kind of creepy cloth flowing on our character here. And yeah, it also kind of hides some of the flaws in the animation of the character itself. So pretty basic little simulation there. I've also added a subdivision surface modifier to the plane itself. So you can see when I turn that subdivision surface modifier off, you can actually see the individual vertices in the mesh. But once we add this 
it ends up looking much better. So obviously the more vertices you have on your model that you're doing a claw simulation with, the better and the more accurate that claw simulation is going to be. However, it's also going to take more time and processing power in your computer to deal with that simulation. So all I've done here is I've simulated the cloth on a lower resolution base mesh, and then I've subdivided it after the fact to make it look a little bit nicer in the final render. So that's what I've done there. I also did a soft body simulation for a hand that's kind of attached to our character's feet here. So I was trying to create kind of a creepy scene in this case. So you can see what I've actually done here is I've duplicated our 3D character model, and then I've just deleted all the other vertices except for where the hand was. And then I've created a soft body simulation for this hand, attaching it to where the foot would be. So you can see what I've done here. If we go to our physics properties tab, you can see I've enabled the soft body physics. And what I've done here is I've created a vertex group for the simulation to follow. And I'll go into the specifics of soft body simulation in another video as well. But essentially soft body simulation allows you to simulate the effects of movement on deformable objects in your scene. So a lot of the time in computer graphics, we'll use this for like muscle or skin or like a ball bouncing or something. There are a lot of different applications for soft body physics. And of course you can play around with a lot of the settings as well, depending on the look you're trying to go for. But what I've done here is in the soft body physics settings, I've created a weight painted vertex group. So you can see here, I've created a little vertex group near the base of our hand here. And then I've used that as the goal for our soft body simulation to follow. And then I've parented that vertex group to the leg portion of the armature here so that as our character moves, our soft body simulation moves accordingly as well. So you can see it's just parented to that bone of the armature. And then as it moves, it's also colliding with the floor here. So I've made the floor of our scene, that 3D environment reconstruction also collide with it as well by enabling collision physics on that. You know, pretty subtle effect in this specific case, but I'm definitely going to be doing some tutorials in the future regarding how we can get a specific look using soft body simulation. This is one of my first times trying out a creepy effect like this, but uh, I learned a lot and we're going to be going into it more in the future as well. But pretty simple little setup here. I made sure to have a closed manifold mesh on the soft body simulation because that's really important when you're doing uh, soft bodies to you know have a very clean mesh so that Blender can calculate it accordingly without any glitches or errors or anything. So uh, pretty simple little setup here. This is what our parenting looks like without the soft body physics on it. So you can see our arm is just parented to the leg of our character here. And then once we enable those soft body physics, it's only going to be parent with that weight painted group on the arm that I showed you. Uh, pretty nice little effect here. Then I've also made this soft body simulation a uh, collision object just so whenever we simulated the sheet on top of it, that it would also interact with that soft body simulation on the floor there. So nice little setup here, just a fun little simulation test probably didn't notice the soft body simulation in the final shot, but that was a nice test regardless. So hopefully I'm going to be doing some more effects like this in the future that will be a little bit more prevalent in the scene. But anyways, after adding the foreground person into our scene, I've also added a variety of different elements in their own separate view layers within our scene. The next thing that I added were some nature elements. I've just wanted to dirty up the environment in our live action shot with some various nature elements here. And I've used the Nostarga light add-on to add these various elements to our scene. I'll put a link to that nature add-on in the description below. Lots of awesome nature assets to choose from. But you can see I've just, you know, kind of populated the space with some vines and such just to give it that overgrown nature feel. And in addition to placing these vines one by one in the scene more specifically, I've also created a weight painted particle system to fill in the corner of our subway. So you can see these are the main elements that have individually placed into the scene from the Nostalgia Light add-on. And then in addition to this, you can see if I enable in viewport mode, you can see that on a 3D environment reconstruction of our live action shot here, I've actually weight painted a vertex group where I wanted a particle system to emit certain nature elements as well. So this is how you can more procedurally add nature to your scene. And I've done this on a few other videos as well, but this is just a really great way to you can kind of fill in space with nature assets using instances without individually placing a bunch of different grass assets one by one. So I've just weight painted this particle system. Then if I enable it real quick, you can see that the particle system only spawns those nature elements where we've painted those areas. So really nice little effect there. I've been using that technique of weight painting over many different projects and it's never really failed me so far. It allows you a lot of control over the final look of the shot. So pretty simple little setup here. I'll go into rendered view really quick just so you can get an idea of what this view layer looks like. Go ahead and turn on our particle 
particle system and take a look. And now you can see on this view layer the different nature elements that we've added and overlaid in our final composite. So a nice little effect here, nothing too crazy. I've used, I think, three different grass elements from that add-on and the overlaying vines elements as well. So just a nice little way to add an overgrown look to this scene. Now, in addition to adding some overgrown nature to the scene, I also wanted to grunge up the live action shot as well. So I've added some grunge overlays in this view layer right here. So you can see I've just used some various planes here on top of our 3D environment reconstruction. And these planes are actually just alpha planes with various grunge elements on top of them. So you can see they just kind of dirty up the environment a bit and with compositing you blend it into the scene even more which I'll go into in a second but I've just used a few different alpha planes here I've actually used our texture stamps decal add-on for all of these in our scene so we have like some scorch marks some nature elements like moss and such then I also think I used in this particular example some concrete grunge here this guy right here so just overlaying various different grunge maps on top of our 3d geometry reconstruction and then in the compositor i've blended all this together to make it look a lot more seamless so as you can see if we just overlay these elements on top of our live action shot as is probably wouldn't blend that well but if you blend it into the lighting in the live action plate it can give a bit of grunge and grittiness to the live action shot while keeping a realistic look so i've just overlaid these various 2d alpha planes on top of our footage here so pretty simple little view layer there and finally i've added some ants here at the bottom of our scene with our spiderfy add-on so i've just used our ant collection here i've added a goal for this bug system this is the goal for our bug system and these ants are some newer additions to our spiderfy add-on you can see you know pretty basic little ant setup here crawling toward their goal on the right of frame so pretty cool little setup, nothing too crazy. I think in this particle system, we have yeah, 25 ants crawling across the subway system, kind of by the feet of our zombie person here. Just wanted to add a little bit of life to our scene. We're just going to render it really quick, take a look at them. I've again enabled our 3D geometry reconstruction, our ground plane here as a collision object for our ant particle system so that you know they would actually collide with the ground plane here and not go through it. And uh, yeah, essentially just overlaid this element on top of our live action shot as well after baking out this particle system in the particle settings over here. Pretty basic little setup here. Added some ants crawling past our character just to give it a little bit of life. And for all of these view layers, as I mentioned, I made sure that our environment around each element was reconstructed. So as you can see here, if I go into rendered view and enable our environment to be seen, you can see this is just a very basic reprojection of the actual shot onto geometry. And I talked about this in my last video regarding camera projection. I'm just projecting the live action shot onto these planes in the 3D world so that we can then emit the light from the environment back onto the CG elements that are in our scene. So for every single view layer that we have here, we're actually lighting each of these elements with the data from the live action shot by using camera projection. So if you don't know what camera projection is, I've made a ton of videos on that. I'll put all of them in the description below as well. But essentially we're just projecting the live action shot onto the 3D geometry in our scene and using that as the lighting in our 3D world. So just using 3D emission materials here, and then we actually, of course, hide these from our scene so that they're only acting to light our 3D elements, but we're not actually rendering that geometry for each view layer. But anyways, after adding our 3D ants with our Spiderfy add-on, I then added one more view layer to our scene. For this last view layer, I've rendered out everything that we've added to our scene. Rather than rendering all these elements out as a beauty pass, I'm actually rendering all the elements out via a mist pass so that we can then overlay this mist on top of our live action shot to add a little bit more depth to the scene. You can see that by enabling this mist pass data and rendering it out in this way, we can then overlay this mist and use it as a compositing element to blend everything together and add a little bit more depth and kind of a surreal, creepy look to the subway. Using a mist pass is a great way to add some depth to your scene, but in order to render it effectively, you need to first reconstruct the geometry of your live action shot, as well as render out how that mist would interact with the 3D elements that you're adding to your scene. So this is our environment reconstruction for our mist pass layer. And then finally, I should mention that we're also rendering out a shadow catcher of everything as well. So this is actually our last view layer, just a very basic shadow catcher plane on both our walls as well as the ground here. You can kind of barely see our shadows showing up here, but you know, in compositing, you can either bring down the shadows or, you know, lose them a little bit depending on your particular taste. So on this view layer, I'm just rendering out the 
shadows on the 3D reconstruction of the geometry in our scene so that we can obviously control the shadows of the 3D elements that we're adding to our scene individually from the element itself. But anyways, guys, I've rendered out all of these different view layers at 36 samples. I've rendered them out as a multi-layer OpenEXR sequence for better control in the compositing process. And uh, yeah, let's get into the compositing node tree setup. All right, guys, so this is our 3D compositing node tree setup here. Nothing too crazy. Obviously, if you're not used to node-based compositing, this might look a little bit complex, but have no fear. I'm going to break down each element that we've added to our scene in a fairly step-by-step -step process here. So go ahead and start at the beginning. Here we have our movie clip. So I'll go ahead and add a viewer here. So first thing we've added to our node tree setup is just our very basic background live action plate. Then I've added our grunge overlay here. So our alpha plane textures that we wanted to grunge up our environment with. So you can see if I just overlay this with our viewer node, we get this kind of basic overlay of grunge. And I've just used a multiply node here. And I've also blurred our elements as well. So this is our element before we've added it on top of our footage like so then here we are multiplying this on top of our live action plate so pretty basic little setup here i like using the multiply node here because it helps to blend it into the shot a bit better rather than just overlaying it with an alpha over node and i can also change how much of the element that i want to add into our scene as well so if we can increase this you'll notice that obviously we'll get more of the element so we need to kind of you know dial it back depending on realism but i have this around 0.5 just to grunge up our subway a bit so that was our first view layer that we've added on top of our plate. Then I've added our shadow pass next. I've just blurred our shadow a bit as well as darkened it a bit using an RGB curves. So nothing too crazy here. Go ahead and show this viewer node. So these are the shadows from both our character in the foreground as well as the various nature elements. And I'll just show this pass by itself here as well. So you can see the shadows mostly from the uh, various nature elements on the corners of our scene, then a little bit from our character here. And then you can see the sampling, it's a little noisy. So that's why I've actually blurred this element a bit with this blur node right here. All right, so after adding our shadow pass, I then overlaid our nature elements. So you can see here our nature element pass by itself. So here's our nature view layer. And then I actually exported an ambient occlusion pass of our nature as well, so that I could multiply that together with our beauty pass of our nature to kind of deepen those shadows a bit. You'll see here in a second, those shadows get a bit deeper when we mix it with that ambient occlusion. And then I've just blurred the nature a bit to blend it into the live action plate, and then just darkened the shadows as well as brought down the saturation to make it match the live action shot a bit better. And then finally, of course, overlaying all of this nature on top of our live action shot, just like this. So still pretty basic setup here, not totally blended into our shot yet because we still have a lot of that color correction to do, but uh, we're getting closer with every element that we're adding to the scene. So after adding our nature elements, I've then added our environment mist pass overlay. This really helps to add that depth to the scene. So I'll go ahead and show this mist pass by itself here really quick, like I showed before. So you can see that's our mist pass with all of our nature elements and everything included within it. Then I've just used an RGB curves node to bring down the highlights a bit so it wasn't so bright. And also I've made it a little bit more warm. So the mist would go a little bit warmer to give it a little bit more of a grungy feel with this color balance node. So you can see the warmth of the mist pass here after that color correction has been added to it. Then finally I've overlaid this on top of our composite with this add node. So I've just used a very basic add blending mode to just overlay this mist kind of uniformly throughout our entire shot here and now i realize it's a little bit bright but i knew i was going to bring down the brightness levels of the entire image as one of the final steps in the compositing process so i wasn't worried too much about that all right so after adding the mist pass overlay i then added our spiderfy bugs element here in the foreground of our shot so go ahead and find this here so you can see kind of the various bugs here that we've overlaid on top of everything i've just added some blur to it as well as mixed in some of the color from our live action shot with that mix node then i've also just brightened up the general color of those bugs as well before overlaying them on top of our entire composite with this alpha over node and finally we get this and you can just barely see the bugs here it's pretty subtle you can see these guys here i think you can see them moving a bit in the final composite a bit better but uh yeah just added some bugs there and then finally as our final element we've added our character here in the foreground of our shot 
I've also rendered out some ambient occlusion for this guy as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our character by itself here. So here we have our character and you can see that 36 samples wasn't a lot. You can see the you know noise on our element and also the texture on our uh, character as well as the cloth around our character is not perfect. However, I knew I was gonna do a lot of post-processing on this image so I wasn't too worried about this. But uh, yeah, I rendered out some ambient occlusion with this guy as well to deepen those shadows a bit to have a little bit more control. So you can see here we have with ambient occlusion, bring that down a little bit. Finally, I've mixed some of the color from our plate as well with the footage, blurred these elements a bit, two pixels on the X and Y axis, and then I've dropped down the brightness of this element as well before finally running it into our alpha overnode and combining this character element with the rest of our composite. So let's take a look. And yeah, here we have our character overlaid on top of our final shot. Still not there yet, obviously. However, again, I knew I was gonna bring this down, so I wasn't too worried about this. I think, you know, in retrospect, it's a little blue. So, you know, I could obviously down this down a little bit maybe but uh, yeah after overlaying all these different elements together it was time to add that final bit of post processing to give it a little bit more of a stylistic and dark feel especially after adding the mist pass to our shot definitely need to be darkened down quite a bit especially the background so i've added a few different nodes here i've added a glare node to add some glare to the bright spots of our image so you can see probably on the right here where there's a lot of bright highlights on our plane, you can see that once we add that glare node, it actually gives that a little bit more uh, emphasis and you know shininess for a stylistic feel. And then I've also overlaid a letterbox on our footage as well. So we you know didn't have any elements beyond where our live action shot was. So that's what this guy was right here. And now it's looking quite a bit better. And finally, these last three nodes here are just some color correction and some lens distortion for a stylistic look. So I have our RGB curves to bring down the brightness a lot. Let's go ahead and take a look here. There we go, already looking way better. You can see the greens pop a little bit more when it's not so bright. And then finally, some color balance and lens distortion, let's take a look. So I've just warmed up the shadows and add a little bit of coolness to the midtones and highlights, like so. And then finally, we've added some lens distortion to give it a little bit of a creepy feel for that final result. So let's take a look. And there we go, you can see a little bit of chromatic aberration at the edges which uh, some would argue is way too much however I wanted to go for a creepy feel and I also didn't want to boost the samples of my shot up to 100 to get rid of all that noise so it's a little bit of a trade-off there but uh, this is how we got the final shot then I added a little bit of a lens pulsing effect in Adobe Premiere to give that final like horror vibe to it but uh, yeah this is the general compositing setup here I hope you guys got something out of this video I'm gonna going to be making some individual tutorials on a lot of the concepts behind this as well so stay tuned for that as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel and i'll see you next time